What's up, y'all? I Feigl with Flotox. Running up here in Chicago. October 1st, 2020. It's a pretty cool day. It is 50 degrees. Anyways, I woke up, woke up to some some sad news on Twitter today. Seeing that one of my favorite YouTube personalities, Dr. Jeffrey Mishlove, with his channel New Thinking Aloud, has come into conflict, I guess inevitable conflict, with one of my favorite guests of the show, Dr. Jeza, Jason Reza Giorzani. And it's incredibly sad to see such a divide happening. If you're any, anywhere at all familiar with the new Thinking Aloud, Giorzani has uh, been a, a very popular figure on the show and a very he has several dozen interviews with Dr. Mishlov on a wide range of topics from Heidegger and his thoughts on technology, Nietzsche and the Ubermen, Ubermensch, um, Zoroastrian philosophy, the life of Zarathustra, Iranian. Iranian revolutions and history and culture. Just a completely myth myth excuse me, mythology has such a, a wide breadth of knowledge. And so does Dr. Mishlov. And the conversations they produce are really quite astounding. But this morning I woke up to Giorgiani pretty much calling a Calling for a, calling for a rejection of Dr. Jeffrey Mishlow's pacifism. After calling, after Dr. Mishlow called Georgiani a warmonger in his recent video of more thoughts about my friend Dr. Reza, Jason Georgiani, and I am. Very much in, uh, I am very much a pacifist as well. It's funny, my, my wife and I have recently come to the, the observation that we are truly, I don't know, pacifists. We just, we want to be left alone and we want to leave other people alone and everyone's got a little light under this, under the sun, man, you know, like, fuck it. And I think war for, any reason, no matter how defensive it might be, is based on a, is based on an inherent intolerance of other people. So, I think that is one of the greatest things that humanity needs to overcome is, you know, the inherent intolerance we find in things that are new or different or unknown to us. Fear is a very powerful, is a very pow powerful emotion. And we can become fearful without even knowing it really. As I've talked about before with our autonomic nervous systems and our flight and fight reactions, which we have no control over, which, you know, threaten or there's symbols with emotional attachment that's perceived by the unconscious triggering our our nervous system saying there's a, a symbolic threat those are the challenges of human of humanity that's the challenge of every individual is to overcome the ground line is to overcome those fears and those intolerances and to embrace everything that is taboo everything like the uh
like the sadhus, I think is the sadhu. I don't know the term, the Hindu mendicants who roam the streets of you know, religious Hindu sites and who smoke hashish and cover themselves in the, the dust of human bodies and bathe in the Ganges. This is the intolerant, this is the tolerance that we need to work ourselves up to. The tolerance of the Bodhisattva. The tolerance of letting people do what they want to do, despite their violence, despite the harm that may fall upon you. I mean, it's easier to talk about than, than uh, an act, I'm sure. Got this little kitty coming after me. Hi. Hey, kitty. Oh. Very friendly kitty. Meow, meow, meow. Meowski, meowski. See you later, kitty. Oh, I think it's coming after me. That's a friendly kitty. Okay, you should go back, little kitty. All right, see you later. Anyways, that's one of the uh, lessons I learned in my recent mystical journey on the little fun guys. Is that we have a light, a brightness, a divinity, a love, a love spark that shines in each and every one of us that can shine out of the most vile and vile of situations. I imagine myself smothered in a in hoop, really, up to my face, but yet still able to smile all the while singing this little light of mine. And that's the pacifism of Nirvana. That's the pacifism of the of a burning star. Is that it has to look as Jeffrey Mishlov said it in his very powerful, I thought very powerful statement. We have to be able to look evil in the face. Just as Giorgiani has to look himself in the mirror every day. I mean that's that's a fucking hard shade. And I mean I agree. I do agree, Giorgiani is a very dangerous thinker. And at this point, they are thoughts. I am in no way a proponent of trying to see what will happen after a nuclear annihilation and looking for an optimism in a post apocalyptic civilization. And I am in no way a proponent of war, of sending individuals to war, or declaring war in other states, I don't, I don't believe in anything. But, you, you know, even that belief right now is just a thought. I've never been put in a situation in which I have to back it up. You know, yesterday my wife and I were talking and I was saying how I would not be opposed to fighting in an upcoming civil war. I imagine proud boys and white supremacists trying to come into Chicago and I imagine the glorious resistance they would meet. By, by this city's population and I join in on this city's population and defend this city to my, with my, with my life. A buddy of mine in Washington, D.C. 
that's quite a pessimistic view of what's happening as well. Has a go bag ready to flee, to flee our nation's capital during the election. So who knows what's gonna happen. And he's got a pretty pessimistic view of what will happen. And so do I, it's unfortunate, but I'm not looking to flee. There's nowhere to go. The cities are the strongholds. And that's about it. And so I know I'm contradicting myself, but this is a, a point in which I still have not yet been able to control my my fight or flight reactions on this topic because I'm still quite angry about what the situation is and what's happening with fascism in America right now and the increasing police state but you know what the police state isn't new it's been there we've been complacent in it for a long time so that's the thing I don't think we should follow any call to arms. I think we should question every form of authority. And although Giorgiani speaks with such a, a mastery and has such a grasp on the topics he researches and such an insight into them as well, he too can be questioned. And you know what I'm not, I've seen in the comments of, of uh, Thinking Aloud, New Thinking Aloud uh, video that I mentioned that this whole controversy came up about. More thoughts on my friend Dr. Jason Reza Giorgiani on the New Thinking Aloud. I think it was published September 19th. I saw in the comment section of this video that, you know, it is well known that Giorgiani has been going through a hard time. He lost his his position that I think, uh, I think he was at the New Jersey Institute of Technology over, I think the ongoing libel case against him with his affiliation with right-wing media and alt-right media promoting a, uh, I don't know what many saw as a controversial, uh, stance and trajectory of American politics. So he's very he's very smart, but I don't think he too should be unquestioned. I think our most dangerous thinkers need to be questioned most and have them because they will be inherently contradictory and eventually through a continued process of questioning and refining of ideas and decluttering of assumptions that Giorgiani will come to a more peaceful, reasonable, and sustainable viewpoint on the, uh, the future of humanity. Like Dr. Jeffrey Mishlove says, or yeah, like Mishlove says, there need to be this is just one solution. We need critical thinkers everywhere to find other solutions. To question Giorgiani's solution, to maybe use some aspects of it and reject others, and to synthesize. And the process isn't over. It's amazing how much we live in a, a society so obsessed with the apocalypse. From what is it? Eschatology. Just it's uh, you know Judaism. Christianity was an apocalypse cult. Christianity still is an apocalypse cult. We have people in the major faiths, the major religions of our world. We have devotees of these religions who are continuing to push for the end of the world. 
and to create judgment day and the final judgment and to finally be south saved but they never will be they will never be saved Giorgiani neither will not either there is no there is no exception no one will be exempt and no one will be saved everyone will be recycled and put through the grinder again and again until we finally learn our lesson until we've as a human society refined and decluttered all of our assumptions and refined our thought to such a way in which world peace is the only option and world peace isn't achieved by holocaustic you know maneuvers to depopulate the world and leave the quote unquote Nietzschean supermen to achieve you know humanity's final goal no that's not gonna happen diversity is the strength and any of these neo-eugenic policies of technological evolution and biologic combination with technology there will be no exception it won't work because the foundation of all of our civilization is weak, as COVID-19 has pointed out. We lied. Our, our American culture was on fault lines that we had no idea of that have been had that have quaked beneath us and left major gaps for us to fall into, which many of us have fallen into. So I'm trying to see how we can build anything off of this I mean I'll leave it at that I guess because that just leads us back to you know the uh, the inevitability of uh, needing to needing to take the eraser to the whiteboard the uh, nuclear war and you know what that's where pacifism comes in most of us will be passive spectators to the annihilation of the world and that will be it we won't have any say no matter how much you fight you're done you won't be saved Save yourself. Do what you can. Unfortunate day. And the politics of new thinking allowed. Keep thought free. Keep dogma away. I Feigl, Flow Talks. Follow me on Twitter at I Feigl, I underscore F E I G L E. If you want to talk to me hit me up on twitter or in the comments below subscribe all that bullshit fucking sucks all you guys suck and peace and love to my man dr jeffrey mishlove i love you and thank you for being with me today i feigl flow talks